Hey everybody, welcome to today's episode of Daily IoT. On today's episode, continuing this theme of maker to product, I wanna talk about the bomb, the bill of materials. Now, the bill of materials is something that you do not have to worry about at all, really, when you're doing maker projects. So you come up with an idea and you create it, you're gonna be sourcing parts from places like SparkFun and Adafruit and things like that. Occasionally, you may reach out to DigiKey to get some parts or things like that. But uh, availability and component selection is not really a, uh, it's not even not really, it's just not a concern on a maker project. Just whatever you need to cobble together to get the thing working is what you do. And so that's, that's how you proceed with a maker project. However, when you're working on a product, the bill of materials, as I'm finding going through this process, is something much bigger than you would expect. So um, before I started the Puck project, I had heard the term bill of materials. I understood what it was, sort of this master list of components that go into the product. And I felt like I had a pretty good grasp on it. It's a list of things that you need to make your product. What I've learned is that there's a lot of nuances to it as you go through the process of building a product. And so I wanna talk about a few of those today on today's episode. And so for something like the Hockey Puck project, the Smart Puck here, I have, I believe it's 43 unique line items on my bill of materials. And uh, for those, there, there's lots of different software out there that you can use to manage a bill of materials. My first recommendation is to definitely have some way to track this, even if it's something as simple as an Excel spreadsheet or Google Sheets. Um, but there's lots of software out there that you can download that will do bill of materials. Some of the actual EDA packages like KiCad and Altium and things like that will generate a bill of materials for you based on the schematic and components that you select. Um, I decided to go with the spreadsheet approach but using a plugin from Dragon Innovation. Dragon Innovations has a bill of materials plugin that will do some amount of checking for you to make sure you're not duplicating parts and things like that. Um, but it can keep it all in one place. But uh, so there's some smarts built into it, but it's also just a Google Sheets project. And so uh, there's nothing fancy. It's very portable to other things if I need to. And so, uh, but I, I would highly recommend you have something to track your bill of materials. And so in the Dragon Innovation case, the, the plugin that I'm using in Google Sheets, uh, it breaks the parts into several categories. There's the PCA assembly components, fabricated parts and purchase parts. And so uh, let's go through each of those uh, briefly and we'll start with the PCB assembly parts. So that is, I don't have a board handy here, but those are all of the things that are gonna go on the printed circuit board at assembly time at the assembly house. And so things like resistors, capacitors, TDS diodes, uh, 20 pin connector for the e-paper display in my case, all those things that are gonna get placed on uh, most likely surface mount components that are gonna go onto your printed circuit board. Those are the PCBA or PCB assembly parts. And so you have a big list of those and you're tracking these by part number. Again, on a maker project, you might just say it's a 10K resistor. For the purpose of a product, you need to know that it's a 10K resistor with this tolerance and this part number from DigiKey so that when it's time to, or whatever, whoever your sourcing uh, supplier is, so that when it's time to order more, you know exactly what you, you don't have to think about. It. You don't have to look up new parts. Do a search for resistor on DigiKey and see how many, or 10K resistor on DigiKey and see how many, uh, products pop up for that. That's not something you need to wade through every single time you have to make an order. So this, the list that you're building here, the bomb is down to the part number um, for these PCBA components. And so uh, that's the PCBA components piece. The next part is fabricated parts. In my case, uh, that's going to be things like the case that goes inside the puck, you know, these uh, top and bottom halves of the cases. These are uh, fabricated parts, whether it's 3D printed or injection molded, whatever it may be. But also in my case, the puck is a fabricated part. And uh, you know it has this CNC'd out area and and things like that. And so this is also listed on there, not because I need to remember a part number for it, but it's just uh, the the other thing that the bomb provides you is a very quick look at how much your product costs to make. And so for all of these 
parts, you have a unit price and you can base that off of 10 units, 100 unit quantities and things like that. And so, uh, but you have to have them all listed out so you have a good picture of what everything's costing you. So that's an example in my case of fabricated parts. And then the last category that they um, partition these things off into is just called purchase parts. And those are all of the extras that go into delivering your product. In my case, that's things like, I'm gonna ship it with a micro USB cable so that people can charge it and upload firmware to it. Things like the batteries. These are things that are not uh, fabricated or on the printed circuit, circuit board, but are part of your product and that you need to deliver it. And so I have maybe four or five um, things like this that are uh, actual purchase parts where, um, you know, if I need to change up a battery, that's something that I can source from a different supplier, things like that. And it's irregardless of what's on the printed circuit board or the manufactured parts, uh, as long as it'll fit, you know, in the case when it comes time to assemble. And so that's how the parts are broken up. In my particular case, I think uh, it's helpful to see it that way because it also helps you understand where you're sourcing these things from. The PCBA components are mostly going to come from DigiKey, just one big order from DigiKey and however many quantities you need all of the parts and then you'll get them. But things like the battery, I'm sourcing through uh, DTP in China. And so I'm not ordering those from DigiKey. Um, I think there's some things like this that you could order through DigiKey, but you're gonna pay a lot more and it's not something that you need to send over to the assembly house because I can just plug these in or I can have you know another consignment place plug these in at assembly time. And so um, just separating them out helps you also see where you're getting all of these parts from because you have to think about shipping costs from all these different places. You have unit costs for the items that are going into your product, but then you have to factor in, well, if I have to order from six different suppliers, I have to pay shipping on all those. And so it helps you get a better picture of how can I maybe combine things with different suppliers if that's a possibility and just gives you a good look at everything that goes into making your product uh, come assembly time before it gets delivered out to customers. And so that's just a brief overview, again, of the bill of materials and how it helps to look at all of those things, because in the case of electronics I'm finding, at least this is just something I've, I've learned going through this, is the place that I can control costs the most is through parts and things like that. Um, if, if I can source batteries for cheaper, that saves me some money, or if I can find a better supplier to do my cases and fabricate my cases, you know, I, I can see how that affects my total cost of making my product. And you can see where, uh, the thing I like about the Dragon Innovation plugin is it'll show you what what portion of the total cost is spent on different parts. And so you can say, oh, I'm, it's, I'm getting killed. Like in my case, fabricated parts are killing me. The price of the puck and then having it CNC'd out along with the case is really a good chunk of my bill of materials. And so I can look at that and say, man, if I could work on ways of cutting that a percentage down, I could lower my cost to create my product and then, you know, therefore create a bigger profit margin in the end. Uh, one other thing that I want to mention, and this is, I almost forgot, but this is one of the biggest things I've learned about a bill of materials is, you know, on the printed circuit board, I said that I had 43 total line items. I think, oh, it's something like th probably 32 to 35 of those are actual components that go on the printed circuit board inside the case, resistors, capacitors, things like that, um, MOSFETs and, and all that sort of thing. The P1 module falls into that category. Having all those part numbers right now, as of the posting of this video, there is a global shortage of capacitors. And so when I have this bill of materials that I had for the prototype run that Agility put, uh, put together for me, um, when I would go to order again, three or four of the items are out of stock and not coming back. This is just, there's a lot of rollover with part numbers with capacitors right now. And so uh, keeping track of stock is a very big deal because um, not so much on capacitors and resistors, the capacitors things is more of an inconvenience, but on special footprint parts, uh, for example, like my LED, my RGB LED has sort of a special footprint. Um, if that goes out of stock, and I can't find one that has an exact same footprint, I'm in a lot of trouble because now I have to do a PCB rev to accommodate a new footprint. And so keeping track of the availability of your parts on the bomb is a very, very big deal and something that you really want to pay close attention to because otherwise you're going to be spending a lot of time and potentially money finding replacement parts or having to do some rework to replace parts that went out of stock. And the surprising thing like on the capacitors is you go on to DigiKey and you look and it's like in stock, 
to ready to ship right now like 400,000 and you think, oh, there's plenty of that part number. Go and check back in two or three days a week later on DigiKey and it's gone, out of stock completely. And that's what I'm experiencing with the capacitors right now. And so with each order of the pucks, I'm having to find new part numbers for several capacitors on here because the stock just keeps going to zero over and over and over. And that's something that having done a little bit of reading is not going to get any better at least in the next two to three years is what it sounded like. There's just a, a real shortage in that area, capacitors for projects like this. And so um, just something to keep in mind, uh, the capacitor thing you're just gonna have to deal with, but be mindful when you're choosing other parts. Don't pick something that only has a very little stock. Look at manufacturers. You can even reach out to say, what's the life expectancy? Are you gonna make more of these? Are these coming up on end of life? You don't wanna be picking components for the bomb that are near end of life and don't have a drop-in, they, they call it drop-in replacement part, which is um, a lot of electronic components will come up with the next version of a component that is drop-in replacement, meaning it's the same footprint and everything so that you can just swap it out, buy it, and you don't need a PCB rev to accommodate it. And so uh, those are just some things, again, about the bill of materials that you have to handle and deal with when you're making a product, not something that you have to deal with at all when you're doing a maker project uh, from, you know, like I said, SparkFun, Adafruit, you're just grabbing parts from there, occasionally reaching out to the DigiKey, Mauser, Newark, things like that. But uh, when you're doing a product, you're living there and you really need to have a good understanding of where parts are coming from, how much they cost, how much they cost and you know, future supply and being able to semi-predict that and, and look into that. And so uh, that's today's update on the maker to product, uh, daily IOT. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Question of the day. <sighs> Once again, I did not think of it beforehand. Have you ever had any experience or specific experience with a bill of material issue where a part went out of stock that you had to scramble and deal with or do a PCB rev? Some bill of material story that you may have uh, in your career or projects that you've worked on over the years. If you do, please share it in the comments below. I would love to hear it and I'm sure other people watching would love to hear it as well. Uh, otherwise, thank you so much for watching Daily IoT, the show where together we're learning how to make the Internet of Things one day at a time.